Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Business Talks. I am your host, Shawan Burns. In today's episode, we are going to talk about Andrew Holmes. There's been some more allegations that came out against Andrew Holmes and um, Tiffany Henyard. Um, and these allegations are quite disturbing. Um, I do have the report of the allegations that was made uh, um, against Andrew Holmes from Tiffany's uh, aide, a former aide. Um, so we're going to look at that report. And also we're going to go to a Facebook um, and view another video where these allegations were made. Um, I don't know if these allegations are um, in the works with the proper authorities, but um, this is from a credible source. And I'm assuming the person that uh, put this information out there, he uh, actually gave the information to the authorities to look further into it. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about that all on today on another episode of Business Talk. You guys put in the chat, let me know where you're viewing from. Put in the chat, let me know where you're viewing from. Let's see who we got in the building. Stephen Nimley, uh, it's always good to see you. Prima Donna, it's always good to see you. Uh, John Lua, Luna, thank you for watching um, from Louisiana. Uh, John Allen is in the building. Hi, everybody from Birthplace of Blues, Clarksdale, uh, Mississippi. L Boogie is in the house, Bay Area. Um, Elaine Burrs, uh, Tiffany Henyer is redefining to the title of Madame Mayor. That's allegedly, that's the rumor. Um, and S Stephen is from New York. We have Arkansas in the building, Muata Chiquada, Chiquidin, Chick. Window, window. <laughs> I know I killed your name. Anyway, in the building, thank you for tuning in. We got Cape Town, South Africa. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and let's see who else. Indigo, uh, thank you. I, I'm doing my best. Um, Indigo said, uh, I look fabulous. Thank you very much. Uh, Duncan, Oklahoma, that's where Elaine from is from. Kathy Fields, Long Island, New York. Thank you for tuning in. We got Mount Morris, New York, uh, Talena. And Sue Pickett is from Louisiana. Okay, we got M Moxie from Illinois. Uh, D-Day arrived from Austin, South Holland, Illinois. We got Miss um, Mickey, or Miss Mimicky. I believe that's how you pronounce your name. We got somebody from Mexico. Indigo is from Mexico. Central Florida is in the building, Margo. And um, who is this? Most surreal, uh, Tacoma, Washington. And Samuel Matthews is good to see you. I'm from Boston. Post Jerome um, from Gary, Indiana. American Poppy, Miami, Florida. Uh, Labeth, Labetha from Louisiana and many, many more of you. Um, you guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, th these are, it's, it's kind of horrific that we are now into the thick of things. We're thinking the things um, Tiffany and her henchmen can't do any more damage to what they've already done to the city of Dalton. Uh, but then these allegations um, came out against Andrew Holmes last week, uh, these sexual allegations. Um, and Tiffany Henyard, of course, she's covered it up, allegedly. OK, I have to say allegedly because uh, she claims that she did uh, independent investigation, but nobody's came out with the independent investigation paperwork. If it was an independent investigation, the board of trustees would 
have to or had have to uh, vote it on this independent investigation. And I talked to a couple of the trustees and they they said, no, they, they didn't uh, vote on this. So they didn't know anything about this allegation. So we could just sum it, sum it up that Tiffany is lying about this particular sexual assault that happened in Vegas, okay? So, but there was another, there's another uh, thing that's going on uh, with Tiffany Henyard, okay? Um, so first, first off, I just want to read a snippet of the report because I did receive the report, okay, from the Vegas allegation. And this is what was filed with the uh, Illinois Human Rights Office, okay? So it's a civil suit and also it is a criminal uh, case that is being investigated um, currently. No warrants have been issued out against Andrew Holmes. Um, but my sources, and these are dependent sources, well, very dependent sources, that these warrants will be issued sometime this week or uh, beginning of next week. Okay. So we could just be on, on the, put your ears to the ground, be on the lookout for that. Um, we have a, a super chat in the building. Thank you, Elaine. Um, she's starting off the stream, right? Uh, Elaine's, Elaine is saying, it will be my wish that you were fed a tip and were able to be in Dalton, live when they penetrated or perpetrated Walt Tiffany and her thugs. Yeah, that, that, that would be my, um, uh, just, oh, hopefully, you know, that, that would be a good uh, ideal scenario. Um, okay, so let's get to what I want to share with you. Now, the first part of this report I have, actually is three reports buried into one, okay? And this first uh, initial part is from the actual victim um, her name was redacted for number one, her privacy and for her protection. Um, so we we took her name out of the complaint. Um, I'm not going to read that part. Only reason why I'm not going to read that part because that we already discussed that. We know most of uh, this part. Um, but what I am going to get into is the police officer. He also made a report. He also filed a complaint with the human rights um, office in Illinois. And his uh, report is quite different from the young ladies. Remember the young lady, she was drugged. So she don't remember. All she know is she woke, woke up in Andrew Holmes hotel room. She didn't know how she got there. Um, is really disturbing. Okay. And uh, one thing I do want to point out is it was several of them that went out for drinks after they went to eat. They went out for drinks. And I guess Andrew Holmes decided, and in, in this report, let me see if I can find it. Okay. Uh, so you could say, oh, Shawan, you're you're not giving us documented information. I want you guys, this is written in a complaint. I want you guys to see this. Um, and this is why um, I believe <clears throat> Andrew Holmes uh, is the assailant, okay? He is, um, what am I saying? Andrew Holmes, uh, he did intentionally mean to victimize uh, this female. He had um, ill deeds coming. He, wa he wanted to victimize this lady. Okay, so, uh, so uh, I'm starting right here. After dinner, the complainant uh, went out with the Dalton trustees and employee of Thornton who uh, the complainant knew well and thought 
of as an uncle, okay? He was significantly older than her. At some point during the evening, the complainant started to feel disoriented, a feeling of different than one will experience with alcohol, okay? I'm just reading um, because I wanted to show you this part. I don't know if this is the one I want to show you. Okay. Anyway, uh, she she said she felt extremely lightheaded back at their hotel as if the ground was moving and a point that she blacked out and did not recall anything else. The group was, le uh, was to leave the following morning. The complaint complaining uh, woke up. She found she was in the trustee's hotel room, fully dressed. She was embarrassed. She could not find many of her belongings, such as her wallet. Physically, she was experiencing um, some discomfort. Okay. Uh, physically, she was experiencing some discomfort, um, but she attributed to her menstrual cycle. Um, the trustee, and she did not believe that the trustee would engage in any appropriate activities, and she never had any romantic or physical interests in the trustee. Of course she didn't, because uh, Andrew Holmes is damn near 70. Well, he looks 70. I, I'm, I'm not for sure how old he is, but he looked damn near 70. Um, after realizing she did not have her identification, she grew concerned and because she felt like she wouldn't be permitted to uh, travel. Uh, she advised that the officer, she woke up and then she could not find her wallet. Okay, so it goes on that they tried to find her wallet, but eventually she um, came back to Dalton and arriving um, back in uh, Dalton, Illinois, um, she was contacted by the officer and advised that the trustee had told him that the trustee had unprotected sex with her. And so she sought medical attention immediately. Okay, so I just summed it up. Um, I wanted to share this other part with you. Let me just... Um, there, there's, she's seeking because, you know, she was placed on force, uh, medical leave or administrative leave, but they didn't pay her. Uh, so they forced her out. And then eventually she, they told her, Hey, if you want to get a letter from the doctor, or if you want to come back to work, you got to get a letter from the doctor. So she kept on asking like, what kind of doctor do I need to get a letter from? And then they never contacted her and they then they decided, oh, we'll just fire you. Okay, so that this is how they covered it up. Um, so this is the retaliation part. This is another report. Okay. Okay. So this, this is the uh, report of the officer. Okay. It says at some point during the call, the trustee made reference, reference to him engaging in many sexual activities with a Dalton Thornton employee. And there was some just suggestions that the employee may not have had the ability to consent or did not provide consent. Um, the officer advised Henyard and co uh, uh, the complainant that, that the officer began to record the call once he believed there has may have been an issue, issue with actions be, actions be, I don't know who wrote this, non-consensual, don't even make no sense, but anyway. 
I'm not a grammar teacher, but did did this sentence doesn't read well. Anyway, the officers informed Henyard and the um, complainant that he asked the trustee to repeat himself on a number of points so that he would be recorded. The trustee then asked the officer if he had an iPhone. The officer trust told the trustee he did. The trustee then FaceTimed the officer. The officer informed complainant and the mayor that he could see that the trustee had his shirt off and appeared to have exerted himself. These are the words that they use. The trustee then panned the camera toward the bed where the officer could see a woman who was partially dressed who appeared to be the uh, Dalton Thornton employee. The trustee then moved the camera to various private areas of the woman's body, displaying them on screen and times moving, you know, some of the articles of clothing, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, the officer could not tell at the stage whether the woman had consented or not or was capable of the same and requested the trustee to terminate it, the transmission. Um, at one point, the mayor, so when they told the mayor, Tiffany Henyard, she said she was shot, but then she asked him, well, why he called you? That's what she asked him. Why did uh, Holmes call you? And I'm a, and he said, well, I, um, I'm assuming that he called me to brag about it. So he's uh, seeking damages as well. Okay. So, and I'm not going to get into his report. But um, we'll get into that later on about his his report. For some, I, for some reason, I thought in this report it said actually, and these are several reports. Actually, Andrew Holmes actually hand, handed her a drink. That's why I'm saying I, I have to find that part. But uh, he he gave her a drink. And that's when she started feeling disoriented. Um, there, there are several, uh, like I said, there are several different filings for this. It, and it's 40, 50 pages long. Um. So, and it's, it's pretty disturbing, okay, on Andrew Holmes' action. Okay, so, you know, I, it's nothing more I can say about this um, besides he's pretty disgusting. Uh, John Luna, uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, love your channel. Have to get back to uh, hope to catch more of your live streams on Tiff Meister Circus. I have to get back to work, but I wanted to show some support. Well, thank you. Thank you for the love. Okay. Uh, let me just bring this up. And you guys, you want to look this guy up. His name is Jedediah Brown. Jedediah Brown. Uh, he's an activist, uh, an activist that's in sh Chicago. And some people called him and they told him, hey, we want you to start looking into these allegations against Andrew Holmes. And, um, you know, there's some other stuff that's been happening in the city of Dalton. Of course, we all knew that before this came about. Um, and so he he has several lives on his ch uh, channel on Facebook. I don't believe he's on YouTube, but he has several lives on his channel discussing 
this particular matter. And matter of fact, Jedediah was in Dalton when the helicopters and everything was going crazy. And he tried to go to City Hall or Dalton Village building and they were closed. So remember I told you Tiffany pulled the um, okie doke and called the gas station saying it was a gas leak. My sources is telling me that was uh, the police, chief of police that actually made that call. That's what my sources are saying. I'm not allegedly, I'm not, I'm not for sure how true that is, but my sources are telling me uh, Larry Lacey actually uh, made that call. So he's making false reports. And so that's why the gas people was coming out. And that's why Tiffany had, she, you know, she was scared. She thought actually Andrew Holmes was being arrested by the feds. And so she slipped out the, the back door anyway and closed down the city hall. Um, so Jedediah Brown was there that day because his people was telling him that they were actually going to arrest Andrew Holmes that day. So everybody knew uh, Andrew Holmes or everybody thought Andrew Holmes was going to be arrested Friday, but he, actually he, he was not. Okay. They just kind of jumped the gun on that. Anyway, so let's get to this. You know, he's pretty entertaining, but you guys, I'll, I'll stop and I'm just reacting to the video, but he says some damning information about Andrew Holmes and Tiffany Henyard. This is, people are coming to him and saying, hey, this happened to me, which is really sad. Uh, who live in Dalton and may also, and that may also want to reach out because of their own personal in, uh, interest. Now, if you are not a resident of Dalton, you being nosy. But I do tell you one thing for sure. This may be some good tea to give a little bit of your time to listen to for somebody who is very, very visible and very, very vocal when it, when it comes to things in, in, uh, in, in the uh, uh, Chicagoland area. Um, I am not here for Tiffany Haynard. And I will say this. Um, before I talk about specifically Andrew Holmes, I don't really have a, a, a real, a real opinion about Tiffany Haynard. I am not after Tiffany Haynard. Um, and I'm not for or nor against what I will tell you based on the, 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 the research and the, the stuff that we've done. Um, the, the voters of Dalton really got to make a decision based on their quality of life. Um, the people of Thornton Township have to make a decision based on their quality of their life. And if this stuff affects them in a way that they want to keep it or move it on. All publicity, I'll tell you one thing for sure. I'm 37 years old. I ain't never heard Dalton this damn much in my life. Dalton ain't never had this kind of shine. And, <laughs> and Dalton got to do something about it. Good, bad, or uh, ugly. Good, bad, ugly cute or indifferent, Dallas is, I mean, uh, Dalton is on the map. Dalton, you're on the map. And this will be the time, if uh, if there ever was a time, this will be the time for Dalton to do something. Okay, right. I swear, oh, all y'all, uh, all right, so uh, I never heard Dalton this much. And I'm talking about Dalton is being talked about around the country. You would have thought that Dalton didn't got bigger than Chicago. So, you know, you got to think of, y'all got to do what y'all want to do uh, with this. Uh, uh, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, if you want to keep the administration in or not. And I would also like to say this in fairness. Uh, Tiffany Haynard is in Illinois. Illinois is one of the most corrupt. And I'm not saying that to say she is officially corrupt. What I'm trying to tell you is this is one of the most corrupt places in the country. And I believe, based on my opinion and the things that I've seen and heard, that Tiffany Haynard is simply being boastful. And she is literally uh, flaunting what a lot of Illinois politicians do. Y'all, that's a heavy thing. If you ever call something, catch this. That black woman... Ain't doing nothing too different than a lot of people do a little more quietly, a little bit more tactfully, a little more hidden. She just, she just out here beating her titties with it. That's, you know, because she ain't got a boss. But you, you understand what I'm saying? It's the, 
I'm sorry, I'm going to try to stay professional and focused as best as I can in this report. But I believe that, you know, I still believe that as a black woman, uh, I give her a certain level of consideration because she's doing what the hell people around her are informing her that she can and cannot do. And damn it, people in the system, and y'all, this is going to be liked by some, this is not going to be liked by some, but people in the system been doing this shit a lot of a, a long time and a lot of time with no checks or balances by the constituents of the individual uh, uh, areas uh, in Illinois. Because, y'all, some of this is just the Illinois way. Like it or not, leave it or not, y'all, the voters will decide that in a year. And so I'm not after Tiffany Haynard. That's not what I'm tasked or even considering or compelled to do. Now let's get into the Andrew Holmes report. Uh, if you are ready for the Andrew Holmes report, say Jedediah, put on in the comments, I'm listening. That's all I want you to say is that I'm listening and then I'm going to get into uh, the Andrew Holmes report. I think this is going to be very interesting information. It's going to be very interesting information that you all might want to just have heard and to consider. Um, and this will be my last disclaimer. I try my best to be thorough. I am not perfect. I am working with humans and they are not perfect as well. Some of the people I've been working with for over a decade are of an official capacity. Some of them in law enforcement, some of them in government and in, in the various places. Uh, I, they have been very, very effective and instrumental. I would say that I have a 95% confidence rate, uh, in them. Uh, with the work that we've done and that we do because they've really not failed me. And whenever we wrong, it's only because I uh, put shit out too fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, that this is what he was saying in his last live stream. You know, whenever something goes haywire is because they they started talking about it uh, too fast. Um, before the authorities could make their move. Anyway, Buff Soldier 32, uh, thank you for the super chat. I'm worried for the safety of victims and potential victims. Why Tiffany is still in that office blows me away. Safety should be job one. I absolutely agree with you. And I don't let them finish the verification process uh, because I understand you got to be consistent and keep people paying a damn attention because Negroes won't be paying attention. Somebody that's right now wrote, I'm listening, and then already forgot what they was on here for and was about to go do what y'all do on Saturday. So now we're going to go. I see there are people saying that they're listening into this Andrew Holmes report. And like I said, I try to be very brief and very precise. So the first thing that I would like for you all to understand is that we have spoken to somebody. I cannot say who a lot of cannot say this, that, and the third, but cannot say who, but there is uh, no federal investigation that is going on with Andrew Holmes. There is no federal investigation that is going on with An uh, Dalton trustee Andrew Holmes right now, but we cannot confirm nor deny the potentially confirmed investigation or probe into Mayor Tiffany Hanyard, if that makes sense. But officially, it is ruled out that there is no federal investigation of Andrew Holmes at this time. If there was at uh, any point, if there at any point did you say anyone told her she didn't know. Um, at this point, what we also are understanding is that if there is any charges that are gone in extradition to another state like Nevada, then the U.S. Marshal may be in, involved in a transporting, but there is no federal uh, agency that's looking into him for a federal crime. But we do find it to be very interesting that he is a elected official in the city of Dalton, whereas we who have found people that have committed murder and have kidnapped people, do you all know that in a small town like Dalton of about 20,000 people, we cannot ascertain or confirm the official residence of Dalton trustee Andrew Holmes. And as we trace it, it looks like that this man potentially has not even lived at the place listed as his official residence for years to come and that there may be other individuals. 
individuals in there who are not affiliated or directly connected to Andrew Holmes. And it is also interesting because we have had individuals who have attempted to do our typical tracking and Andrew Holmes has not been at any residence consistently. And I know that we've come into this over the last 48 hours, but I'm telling y'all, we're good at what we do. We do not know where this man really lives. Now well, and that's why him and Tiffany used, let me give you a backstory. Him and Tiffany knocked heads because Tiffany thought Andrew Holmes shouldn't have been there because he's not a resident. Okay. So all of a sudden that they got these buddy, buddy relationship, Tiffany was trying to make a power move. She's trying to get as many people on the board that support her. So that's why that relationship turned in from sour into like some type of love affair I, that they agree with. But I know that Andrew Holmes, um, they were trying to get him kicked off the ballot or get disqualified because he was not a resident of Dalton. So apparently he changed his residence to what this uh, Je Jedediah is saying. Hey, um, can I use your address? But he does not officially live there. Okay. Now we do believe that there is a relationship that he has with somebody who is connected to a man who feeds the homeless called Michael Earhart. There's a man out there feeding homeless people. He got this big ass round grill that he goes out there and, and cook people food. And he may be related to a person that Andrew Holmes is in a relationship with and living with. I'm not going to say her name or any of that because it's not, I don't really get, I don't really care about that, but as a village trustee, he should, he doesn't, he may not potentially live there. And so that right there is, is, um, is, is, it's a lot involved with that. But if he doesn't live there and he's connected to with this man, uh, Michael Earhart, then potentially maybe Michael Earhart be cooking his ass some meals or giving him a little bit of the leftovers after he have taken care of the homeless people. Because I know for a fact, I am not speculating or guessing. We know for a fact that he is connected to uh, Michael Earhart at some time. She said, who cares? Well, Tiffany didn't get the fuck off of the live. I said, I'm giving a report. I'm telling you everything, what you care of and what you don't care of. I care. That's why I flew all the way to the fuck here to figure it out. People do care. And I don't know if you were uh, uh, just repeating it like me or who cares, but damn it, you can't text to me like that while I'm trying to be focused because I'm... No, I don't. I do this shit for free. They know how to pay me to do this shit. I'm doing it because it's from my heart. Now you pay attention. You better care if you want to laugh. And if you don't, get off. It's Saturday. I would better been able to go out there and enjoy my Saturday in a warmer city. But I'm here, so you better care. Cause I told you he was very entertaining. <laughs> but... Damn it, we work too goddamn hard. I've been up for almost 48 hours talking about some who care. You care now. We don't know where he lives officially. That is a problem because you got to live there. To represent there, to vote there, to pay attention there, uh, and to be a man of his stature and to lie that he lived there if he don't is wrong, unethical, should be criminal, means he's disqualified to run as a trustee in the village. Right. All right. Uh, the next thing that we understand, I had the opportunity to go to Dalton myself and I talked to several residents and there's a climate and a culture of fear. People are in Dalton afraid to talk or say certain things because they're afraid of the police department. Does that make any damn sense to y'all? People are legitimately afraid of the police in the city. And ain't it only about six of them motherfuckers? Y'all can take them. But okay, don't be afraid of the police. The police ought to be accountable to you. They got to be accountable to you. But in all seriousness and all jokes aside, I want you all to listen to me because I am going to use my words very specifically. I am not saying alleged. I am telling you all that I was directly told. Now, we limited the conversation because I do not want to become the witness in a um, in a in a in this particular type of case. But what we were told is that it appears that Andrew Holmes does has a liking for women. Now, we do understand that he has a Nick San Nick Cannon uh, um, size amount of kids. Him and Nick Cannon is running neck and neck and making sure that the black population is consistently on the rise. 
whatever. But what we have also ascertained in our findings is that it also appears that Mr. Andrew Holmes has a liking for underage girls. And there may be a bit of grooming that have taken place. Now, what has happened or what we have been uh, able to understand from testimony, testimony of individuals that we will not mention. I've talked to some parents. I've talked to the friends of parents and what it has or has been said and what has been alluded to and what we are now looking further into is that there are four, but out of four, two, uh, that, that, that we have uh, literally got specific information about of individuals that are underage. Now, this is where the shit gets interesting and it takes a real interesting turn for me is because if he has had a consensual sexual relationship with underage girls that have been groomed, you got to deal with that, right? There's a level that you got to deal with that. But then they're telling... Somebody said, don't come at the police department. Why are these people on here uh, defending something? And I'm literally a man that has been tasked and that have come here to get research and information. I'm not coming at nobody who don't deserve to become, to have, have been come, came after Jasmine. Lord have mercy. So what they're saying is, anyway, <laughs> these underage uh, accounts are saying that basically he may have been involved in a little bit of grooming. And one of the things that it appears that Andrew Holmes has uh, potentially done is he have taken these underage girls, which means y'all might have seen, listen to what I'm going to say out of my goddamn mouth. There may, there, it is alleged that, that, uh, that some of these individuals, these underage girls, that he've had these relationships with, although consensual, he have taken them with him to crime scenes. Do you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? So what they're saying is, anyway, these underage uh, accounts are saying that basically he may have been involved in a little bit of grooming. And one of the things that it appears that Andrew Holmes has uh, potentially done is he have taken these underage girls, which means y'all might have seen. Listen to what I'm going to say out of my goddamn mouth. There may, there, it is alleged that's. That, uh, that some of these individuals, these underage girls, that he've had these relationships with, although consensual, he have taken them with him to crime scenes. What? So Andrew Holmes uh, potentially have brought underage female companions with him to crime scenes. Uh, we do have names. We do have images. I'm not lying to you guys. And that stuff not only is being turned over, we are looking further into it. But I've talked to some parents and I've talked to the to the to the uh, uh, to parents of some friends. Of uh, so I see some people came in late. This in, this young man or this individual, he's not really that young. Uh, Jedediah Brown, he is an activist in Chicago and people have called him to investigate the things that's been going on with the village of Dalton, specifically in um, into Andrew Holmes. Um, so basically he's saying four other young women, I don't know if they're women now, but they were underage when this claim happened. Um, four other women came to him, either parents or the, the individuals came to Jedediah and told him what Andrew Holmes done to them. Sexual relationship. Well, he's using the word grooming, but we don't know if it was consensual or he took advantage of them. But how can you consent if you're a minor? Really? Um, and they, they're saying that Andrew Holmes has an appetite for young little girls, basically. Of four individuals. And that is sick as the, as the absolute hell. And I am not saying alleged because of a certain reason. So I would love for Andrew Holmes to sue me. I would love for Andrew Holmes to sue me for what I just said, because it will help me give the, it will help me give the information 
that I am giving. Now, the next thing, if you are a person in Dalton that have any further information about this, you need to reach out to me immediately because even if it was consensual, if they were of a, if it wasn't of a legal age, that is a crime. And you cannot have a person out here passing out flyers for rape victims and people that have done acts like this and then they turn around and do it. It exactly. doesn't work. Now, the next thing that we have gotten or found and ascertained in this Andrew Holmes report that has been interesting to us is that it appears that Mr. Andrew Holmes is getting to the bag. He ain't just getting, and he ain't just out here frucking, he out here getting to the bag. And so what has been a long-standing problem with people in advocacy is y'all think we don't got no jobs. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Andrew Holmes might be the most Jamaican activist <laughs> I know. Because on paperwork, if you do the research, this man got hella jobs. <laughs> and the crazy part is, is that damn it, these are full-time jobs. Full-time jobs. So I'm trying to figure out how the hell did we get a Jamaican activist in Chicago and didn't appreciate this man for how damn hard he working. Seven full-time jobs. It ain't seven. But damn near Jamaican number full-time jobs and still got time to come out here and help y'all with y'all pain, y'all drama, and y'all issues and experiences. So it looks like he has a job with the CTA full-time. Yeah. Looks like he was getting paid from the board or the village of Dalton. It looks like he's getting paid from a foundation. Now, I'm going to pause yeah. right there in the foundation that he also works for full-time, the Andrew Holmes Foundation. Oh, shit. Is he a junior or a... a, a is he the third or the fourth? Because you mean to tell me that I could have been out here working in my own name, in my own name, and honoring my own name? Shit. I'm going to start the Jedediah Brown Foundation, and they better pay me. So it looks like he works for the Andrew Holmes Foundation. I don't know what the fuck they do, but that is he also worked for Chicago Survivor. Yeah. Chicago Survivor. Uh, yeah, so... Um Hannibal's in the building. Thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, they Andrew Holmes has several full time jobs. When I did a research on him, he uh, works for CTA. He works for uh, what is it? The Village of Dalton. He has several other um, nonprofit. He has his own nonprofit, and then he's over some other a nonprofit organization out of the city of Chicago. And it's like, okay, you you have like four or five full time jobs. Well, the village of Dalton trustee, I believe that's a a part time position. But you have all these full time jobs. How how are you fulfilling your duty with all these full time jobs? That it doesn't make sense to me. Um, and, and, and full time. So one of the issues with the Andrew Holmes Foundation that we found to be quite interesting is that he is not only in charge of everything, but he's also the accountability. How the hell you got a whole organization where you are the, the leadership of the day to day and the leadership of the board who could check who was going on. So, I mean, I guess that happens. That's the ghetto shit we do do now. I ain't gonna lie now. I done thought about getting somebody kid and getting me a little couple, a few extra thousand dollars over, over, over this last year, but I didn't do it, but I know people do it. So we ain't gonna be out here pointing fingers at niggas who are out here trying to survive. Ain't what we're gonna do. But I will say this, based on the information and our findings, if it is in fact the actual truth, um, if he's getting money into an organization that doesn't have true accountability, the problem becomes that it's money that's coming for accountability that, uh, or for advocacy that affects your life. That's where our issue would come in. So it looks like the Andrew Holmes Foundation may have gotten grant money and or gotten grant money through a firefighters association of some sort. I am not indicating or saying that they have done anything corrupt per se, but this fire company it might have get have gotten hundreds of thousands of dollars that then as a fiscal agent they give to the Andrew Holmes Foundation, etc. There's a few traces of things like this, and that money then I guess is you apply for payroll or whatever projects they do. I cannot confirm nor deny the day to day work of the Andrew Holmes Foundation because I am not I was not aware of them before this weekend, nor do I really give a damn. Uh but I do know for a fact he working all them jobs and he the only person that's really listed outside of his grand child, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in a real sense, not they knocking on the door, 
um, if he's getting all this money and it's unchecked, then that means that donated money that's coming to an organization to do a work is not um, is not uh, being handled. It could potentially not being handled properly. And if he's getting all of these sources of income um, as 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 a man working all of these full time jobs, then we need to see some W twos as my IRS paperwork. Cause damn. Andrew Helms out here doing too good for the hood, advocating and paying all these taxes, because I know he's paying them taxes. And I know he ain't had no money. And I know they're not still in foundation money. And they or they just might be. So we have found not only issues with his residence, we found issues with the income and the potential of reporting of things. Uh we also were able to read in detail the report that was made. Uh, the report that was made by the young lady, it is an egregious report, and I would encourage you guys to do a FOIA, a Freedom of Information Act, of the actual reporting that was done against him at the situation in Las Vegas. Um, but um, somebody, they're they trying to get my attention, and now they're throwing me off. It was I was getting to the good shit. Outside of the potential underage... Um, uh, uh, sleeping with un underage women, uh, potentially stealing money or misusing money as an advocate. Uh, we have also spoke to several people who he have advocated for. And I will emphatically and in fact tell you that I have a somewhat confirmation that Andrew Holmes don't do shit. Okay, he don't do shit. And so what these people who have spoken to us in testimony are saying is that Andrew Holmes have come to crime scenes. He will do the newscast and he will stand next to them while they're crying. He ain't doing a damn thing and as of late or well, before he disappeared after the sexual assault allegations was on the way. He has not done anything, and there are people who are upset because they confided or trusted in his advocacy, and he did not do anything for them. Uh, he didn't even get them connected to resources. Bogus as hell. Bullshit. So maybe after or not working for Chicago Survivor, which I'm not, I'm not completely sure if he works for them now or not, he ain't got shit to offer. He could just come and be seen with you, uh, and then he got to go. I, I I knew that. I kind of put the two and two together because if you do a search on Andrew Holmes and all the news report ports come up, he is the most opportunist, luckiest person ever. He's always showing up when somebody died. He's always catching the criminal. Remember, I showed you last weekend, he turned his own brother in for stealing packages. I guess he wants to be a crime fighter and an activist, but you're you're a criminal too because you're doing these dirty little de deeds um, against women, and I wouldn't call them dirty little deeds. Um, this disgusting things towards women and little girls, um, allegedly. But outside of all of that. You all, it looks like he is a model citizen. And uh, we have other things that I cannot speak to right now because I'm going to try to be like them. We are the pending investigation and we're still start, started start looking at the things and we have turned over information to who we consider to be the proper authorities for some of these things that we are uh, finding out. But I have decided within our own official reporting that we have ruled Andrew Holmes to be a complete scumbag who've gotten away with this far too long. What we don't understand what I don't understand is how this man could be with all these police agencies, with all of this, with all these elected official agencies and capacities, all of these places. How could he have been this close? And you telling me that in one fucking weekend we could come in and find individuals that he might have been fucking on that was underage, money being mishandled and being got and gotten wrong or, or misappropriated and him not even living where the fuck he lives amongst other things that I cannot say on this live and God I ain't got to exaggerate because it's a lot more but I feel like we need to just give that over to other individuals to look further into so you're telling me that none of this stuff was identifiable by anybody why this man continued to get awards and be asked give get access and y'all out there kicking our ass for a rumor and this right. shit on paper oh, hell right no. 
So I will be seeing this thing all the way through. I do not have, I do have a personal issue with Andrew Holmes after that Kanika Jenkins case, but this is not personal in its nature. I literally am doing the work. And so with that being said to the voters of Dalton, you've been duped. I don't think that this man should be, and this is my personal opinion, not on that report. I don't think that he should be allowed to represent you any further. And I am asking for you guys to, 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 to join us in a growing course of individuals asking for his immediate resignation from the board of uh, the, the, the Dalton village. This uh, board of trustees. Now, if he doesn't live there, we'll do it on that alone. If he doesn't live where he said he lives, we'll do it on that alone because we're still waiting on the finalization of the investigation uh, of the sexual assault uh, case and some other things that, like I said, we just sent over. Now, let me say this. I uh, thank you for the super chat. We have Yuga fan 17161. Thank you. Uh, all snap, Andrew taking Kitty, shaking my head. Yeah, a Andrew is disgusting, actually. Um, it's, it's sad. And he he makes a valid point. Andrew Holmes been doing his little dirty little deeds throughout Chicago and Chicago Southland, and nobody's said anything against him. The police, no, no reports, no allegations ever came up against this man. To me, that sounds pretty weird or strange, not weird, strange. And then he gets elected and he's not even a resident of Dalton. I was going to be here till Monday night or Tuesday morning. But I'm finna go because it's cold as the fuck. That's why I've been working very hard because I got to get up out of here. It's cold in Chicago. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold. I ain't got time for this. But what we are really disappointed about in all this is that it looks like the meeting that's on Monday will not happen because uh, the mayor, for whatever reason, she has not turned over the appropriate documents to the trust trustees so that the, the board meeting could be official and effective or whatever. So that looks like that it's not going to happen. But what I am very saddened about is that we've also found this to be a pattern in our research that the, the village of Dalton have not had their twice a month board meeting for quite some time. They're only doing it one time a month, which is not what they're supposed to do. But we do know that if she doesn't have the one on Monday, she got to have the one uh, after that, because that's when they go vote on the payroll. And guess what, damn it? Now, because they want to, you cannot do this in government. Now, all these advocates and all these people are reaching out to me and you got people outside of Dalton ready to come and back Dalton up because we don't want them to be afraid. And we don't want them to not tell their stories about being sexually assaulted. And this is crazy because it is alleged. I've not found this to be uh, something that we got as true. But this, we found out that there may be more victims within the government. Damn. Somebody literally referred to, and this is alleged, somebody referred to the mayor as a madam. A madam. So, and they gave us a... They gave us a contingency of reasons of why they were saying that. And so, y'all, we're going to continue to do our best to do the work. Um, but we're going to, uh, we, anybody in Dalton that want to talk to me before I leave, you, you can do that. I have, I have federal. I, and I'm going to say this. Let me just rewind what he just said. I had a couple of individuals that would that inbox me on my Facebook. This was way before I really started going in on Tiffany, way before, like back in September, October, whenever I started talking about her. There's, they said the same thing, that is more to what people see. And this, is um something that I think is the the uh what is it the shit hits the fan type of thing starts spreading everywhere and I think that's where it's at right now so but uh, this is allegedly but I and these two different people one worked in the uh village of Dalton for about two years and he went on one of the trips with them. And then another individual said 
to me that I better be careful of what I'm saying about Tiffany. And I didn't pay that no mind because I live in Michigan. You know, I, I don't think, you know, nothing will happen to me here. But they also said that um, they made claims of devious stuff. And they, and they didn't use the word sexual. They just said other things, illegal things that's been going on. Anyway. That we've also found this to be a pattern in our research that the, the village of Dalton have not had their twice a month board meeting for quite some time. They're only doing it one time a month, which is not what they're supposed to do. But we do know that if she doesn't have the one on Monday, she got to have the one uh, after that, because that's when they go vote on the payroll. And guess what, damn it? Now, because they want to, you cannot do this in government. Now, all these advocates and all these people are reaching out to me and you got people outside of Dalton ready to come and back Dalton up because we don't want them to be afraid and we don't want them to not tell their stories about being sexually assaulted. And this is crazy because it is alleged. I've not found this to be uh, something that we got as true, but this we found out that there may be more victims within the government. Damn, somebody literally referred to, and this is alleged, somebody referred to the mayor as a madam, a madam. So, and they gave us a, they gave us a contingency of reasons of why they were saying that. And so y'all, we're going to continue to do our best to do the work. Um, but we're going to, uh, we, anybody in Dalton that want to talk to me before I leave, you, you can do that. I have, I have federal local i got all kind of friends because i've been getting on people's nerves for a long time i piss people off i guess that's my profession Jedi, Jedi, what's your job to be nosy get in people business and tell it that's what i do and i kind of think i do a damn good job at it because when i pulled up on that police today i said Are you good they said i'm good sir i don't want no problems okay then so i'm telling y'all gotta be scared y'all don't got y'all don't gotta be scared of nobody all right. I'm Jedediah Brown. This is the uh, Jedi, uh, the, uh, the Andrew Holmes report. Um, and I do understand why. Like, again, I'm not. It, it may not sound like that, but I'm not specifically against tenure, ten, uh, Hanyard because it's not what I've been tasked to do or what I'm looking to do uh, as of yet. But that may change very, very, very soon. But this the issue. This the issue. Damn, Tiffany. You got the golden ticket and you're fucking up. You cannot will government as a personal wheelhouse. It has to be for the people. And so what y'all bet not do no more. Y'all bet not do no damn more. It's closed them damn buildings. It was old senior citizens out there at four o'clock. They need their services. Super mayor. We lost. Okay. So I'm not going to um, view the rest of the video, but you heard what he said. And we have to say, uh, these claims are allegedly, okay? Um, we have Donald. Donald, thank you for the $10 super chat. Donald, thank you for the $10 super chat. Care to holding their hands uh, together. Thanks. Uh, thank you um, for the super chat. Um, we, we have to say these claims are allegedly. Now, back to, oh, I, I took it off my screen. Let me just share this with you. I found it where the female employee was saying that she was handed a drink. Now, this is on the officer's report. I, I, I believe this is the officer's report. Yep, the officer's report. So, it goes to say, a meeting took place between the female employee and Henyard where the complainant was also in the office. No one else was in attendance. The female employee advised Henry that while in Las Vegas, she had been out with the trustee in question 
the evening before they came back to Chicago. She indicated that the trustee gave her something to drink. This is why I, I was saying that Andrew Holmes maliciously did this too. She, she didn't, she only had one drink and he put a Mickey in her drink. That's why she was feeling um, lightheaded and that's why she blacked out. She indicated that the trustee gave her something to drink. Shortly thereafter, she became very unsteady and lost her sense of balance and that she had no recollection of anything that occurred after until she woke awoke in the trustee's room the next morning. Uh, she indicated that she never had agreed to relations uh, with trustee as he is substantially older than she was and she thought of him as an uncle, but that she had been advised that the trustee was saying that he had unprotected sex with her in Las Vegas. Now this is Byron Mao's account of the incident, okay? This is from his eyes. Uh, after hearing the female employee complaint and factual retelling, Henyard asked complainant if he knew anything about what the female employee was suggesting. He described that he witnessed during the call with the trustee and advised that he had a recording of the portion of the communication. Um, so Henry act, reacted in shock, but she she wasn't. She was faking. She she was faking. Um, and then it goes on to talk about how they ostracized this guy, basically making him work while he got in the car accident. Um, his He was injured, all kinds of crazy stuff. And they still called him to work, even, the, even though the doctor took him off of work. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff. He's still working at the, the police department, but I don't know how long. And they probably scared to fire him now since everybody knows about this situation anyway there there you have it guys that's uh sicko andrew holmes and your girl this is a uh, allegedly um rumors rumors against against her that they're calling her a madam you know it's nothing more to say about that there's really nothing more to say uh, tomorrow, I might view this video. Um, I forget what the guy's name is. He's a really big YouTuber. Uh, but he went to Dalton. And Dalton police is making the reports of uh, retaliation and intimidation really true. Because all they did was intimidate these individuals when they visit, visit the village of Dalton. So um, I might look at that tomorrow, um, just portion of it. But um, yeah, and Andrew Holmes and Tiffany Henyard, they Tiffany Henyard is a piece of shit mayor and Andrew Holmes is disgusting. He needs to step down. And I hopefully they they are going to be arresting him soon. OK, so you guys put it in the chat. Let me know what you think. Um, it's a short life. Um, I'll be on tomorrow at the same time. So I'm sending all my good to you. I will talk to you tomorrow.